what is the big issue that what? concerns you and the world? Well, it's the environment. Now, did you ask me to make five really, really outstanding paintings that will grab and hold the attention of everyone who walks by your gallery? Of course. And that is expected of you. <laughs> yes. When I accepted the challenge to make five extraordinary paintings, one of the first things I said, I have to research them. the environment, climate change, and, and other developments. And I immediately decided to make a series of TV shows where I'd go out and, and invite someone like Paul Ehrlich to come on the show and I'd discuss biology, ecology, population, and I'd go out and invite many other people to come on the show and I'd ask them what they thought were the big threats, what were the big opportunities. And that is how I started to get more inputs into my head that helped influence me as I approach a painting. What we worry about is that the flanks of Greenland are now melting much more rapidly than any climatologist's theories. We want to bring new thinking and attention to the threat that climate change poses for all of us, including our grandchildren. We also want to bring attention to the business opportunities that climate change creates for everyone. The solar economy, the clean energy economy, is going to be the most important business opportunity of the 21st century. I made the transformation from business to art very easily. And I haven't left behind by any means all of my experience in the world of business. Um, in business, I was always focusing on issues. Well, I almost immediately, once I started painting, started to paint issues. And that's what, that's really the only thing I paint. One of the, uh, but I think people in business think what people are doing in science is different and what change. people in art Forming. are doing is different. However, I think there's a commonality. For example, in all three fields, everyone is using the principle of concentrate on what matters most. They're all trying to find the resources that they have to make progress. And they're all being very creative in what they do. Our goal with this program in the long term is not just to empower the individual teachers that come through the program, but to really transform the way science education is done at the elementary school levels. But when I'm working on a painting, I want to put a face on something, and I want to affect the emotions, and I want to, I'm able to affect emotions differently than you can do with words, with music, with business issues. The first painting I made was Population Explosion. The more people we have, the more greenhouse gases are going to the atmosphere, the quicker we're going to cook our planet. The reason I made that painting first is because it is the population, the people, that are the ones that affect climate change and other, other aspects of our environment. The second one was climate change. I wanted to personalize all the major human forces that generate the gases that go up into the atmosphere and contribute to the warming of the Earth. Burning fossil fuels is insane. That's what's driving the climate change. We know absolutely 
that it's anthropogenic. That is, the climate change is being driven by human beings, primarily by burning fossil fuels and deforestation. The third painting was, in a way, an extremely difficult painting for me uh, to find a way uh, to make it because I wanted to deal with the degradation, the decreasing number of species in the world. And any kind of painting you make has to work, not just like an, just as an intellectual idea, but as a painting. So the painting I made is called End of Species. And I had to find a way to make it so that everything wasn't going downward. And it took me a few days to find a way to have everything intellectually going downward, but as a painting going upwards. My fourth painting. I'm aware that the Chinese are building the two largest utility scale solar power plants in the world. Those power plants and others that they'll build will give the Chinese an opportunity to use the energy from the sun at basically no cost. If we transform just 0.025% of the, the solar energy that we get from the sun, we could power the whole Earth forever, pretty much. The fifth one is called hope. 90% of students are convinced the climate is changing. Only half of them understand what causes the climate to change. They feel powerless to do something. Hope reminds us that it is the human spirit that matters most. I think it also has to have a kind of integrity, but sometimes it's a visual integrity that I have to learn to understand. And sometimes we have to learn an artist's language. Working intensely on making the paintings for the art exhibition has a profound impact on me in a couple of ways. For example, I have gone out and bought big barrels. I collect as much water as I can, and I use the water in the painting process. I'm convinced we are going to build a better civilization, but we have to create a bandwagon effect that includes all the voices, that, and we need to magnify their voices to motivate the politicians and other people to get on with the work of the people. I think paintings can change the world.